Namaskaram everyone. Welcome back to the 16th episode of our Master Unreal series and in this episode we are going to continue our inventory path. This is the time where we make our indicators, selections, character in the inventory menu. These are the three things that we will be doing in this video. So without wasting any time, let's just get started. Okay, so we are in our editor now. Let's go to our WBP grid case and here we would like to create two variables that will help us in drawing the box. So I'll say indicator top left position. This would be of type vector. And I'll create another variable that is highlighted size. This would be vector again. And I would like to give them a category and name it indicator. And I'll also move this here. And now in the sequence node, just add one more pin. In the second pin, we are going to connect a node called draw box. Now this need a context. So I'll get the context from here. It needs a position. So this is the indicator top left position. I will multiply it by unit size. That is nothing but our box size. And I'll plug it here. Then I'll just duplicate and I'll change this indicator variable to highlighted size so highlight size into unit size and pass it here but before passing we will go to our utilities generic functions create a function called get to d vector and i would like to return the vector so this is going to do nothing but return the vector as it is but it will give you a choice whether to flip the x y coordinates or not because like i said unreal is opposite the y direction is in horizontal and the x is in vertical. So we have to flip our mathematical coordinate which is stored in a vector form. So I'll say input vector and the type would be vector 2d. Let's change the order and add a new one that is resultant vector. And now if I say flip xy then in that case we are going to split this the x will go in y and the y will go in x. But if I say no, just pass me the vector as it is, then we are just going to return the input vector as it is. Make this function pure from here. And once you are done, you can use that here. Get to the vector from BP generic functions, flip it and pass it into size. Okay, we are good. Now we need to provide a brush so that it can draw the color. Go in widget inventory system, create a slate brush, name it active box brush. Once you do that, select it from here. You can also go inside and save it. Just make sure the highlighted size is like one, one, three, three, whatever you want to set and the indicator position is zero, zero. Now we need to change the color. So for this, I'm going to make a selection. So I'll check if item in hand. So if there is an item in hand, then in that case, we would like to show a green color and the hex linear would be 53 f one eight three three. Just press on it, press OK. And now if there is no item in hand, that means it is placed on case. Now in that case, we would like to show a yellow color, but it should be fading in and fading out as the time passes by. Just to give a sort of animation feel. So in the event graph, add an event tick node if you deleted it accidentally like me. And then I would like to create one variable that is going to control the alpha. So that is what is going to increase and decrease the brightness, which would give us the feel of animation. So I'll go here, set this, and now I'm going to keep increasing the alpha up to 0.2 because that's what the max value we would like to have. So for this, we would like to keep adding. What is it that we want to keep adding is that the previous value of alpha plus the delta, the change that we keep adding till it reaches 0.2. So for that, I'm going to call the multiply node and the change is 0.0035. Should it be adding or decreasing? So if you reach 0.2, then we want to reverse the process. We want to decrease the alpha delta by delta so that it gives you that animation feel. So for this, I'm going to again use a select float and then I'm going to create another variable, decrease alpha, and this should be of type Boolean, okay? 
now if this is true that means we would like to decrease this count so i'll just send it minus one so this will become negative and this will keep subtracting from this but otherwise we will add it so just give positive one and once we are done we are going to go for a branch node and now this thing is going to decide whether in the next tick we want to start decreasing or increasing so for this i'm going to bring the decrease alpha and the alpha value here so if alpha is greater than and equal to 0 0.2 as soon as it reaches 0 0.2 then we would like to check if you were increasing at that time so if you were increasing then this would be not so if you're increasing and you reach 0 0.2 then you have to reverse the decrease alpha value so just go for it and decrease the alpha so just set it to true but if that is not the case that means you are decreasing so if you are decreasing and you have reached the value of zero or less than zero then we would like to start increasing so just plug it here and i'm going to go for a branch node again this would be plugged here and start decreasing the alpha okay that's it that's all we need now if i hit compile and i go to on paint we would like to provide that second color here so i would like to split this structure pin the value would be one zero point nine four zero and this would be the alpha so just bring it here all right now if i hit compile and play press i you can see it is blinking and it is not going full yellow because we have set the maximum 0.2 okay and now we need the events that will help us to modify these variables from the inventory case so we will go in the event graph of wbp inventory i'll create custom event move case pointer and this is going to set indicator top left position and the position is what we are going to receive from here the next event is highlight area so this is going to set the top left position because item can be placed anywhere so we would like to have that indicator position i will just put it here and we also want to set how much size you want to highlight so set the highlighted size plug it here the value would be coming from here again and we also want to change the indicator type so i'll go in custom event change indicator type and the indicator type would be whether the item is in hand or not so i'll just duplicate it and i'll change it here okay we also need the equipment area so i'll go here and we would like to create one more that is equipped area This would be vector 2D again and put it here. Now, of course, when you equip something that will be present and this active color box can also be present at the same time. So we are going to continue from here. I'm going to duplicate this node, connect this context here and let's create another variable equipped top left position and let's put them in the equipment category also let's move this equipped area here cool we are good so just pass the equipped top left position of course by multiplying it with the unit size and the size would be equipped area and let's duplicate this multiply node okay and plug this here you can use the same brush you can change the color and go for this linear value 0a 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 a8 save and compile and we also want to show a text e that represents that you have equipped this so i'll go for draw text and we are going to go for make literal text and we will provide the value e here so this is going to write e and let's connect this context here now this top left position would be in the bottom right and also we just want to write it if you have equipped something so if you have equipped something then the equipped area will be non-zero so to check it whether equipped area is zero or not i can do is zero to d and then not boolean 
So if it is not zero vector, that means there is something that you have equipped. Then only we are going to do this. And now what would be the position? So we are going to perform an add, add three pins. So I'm going to add this top left position and let's fix our mistake. We have to reverse it. So get to D vector. We have to flip it and then pass it to the size. And this would be plugged here as well. Now this will take you to the bottom right, right? From top left to bottom right. But we want to give certain padding in left and right. So I'll just write multiply node and the unit size and how much padding you want to give let's say minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 in top and minus 0 0.75 in the right you can increase the font size to 30 and now you can download any font so i'll create a folder here that call it fonts go inside it import and I have this Citica small font. I'll just double click on it. I want it to be my default font. So I'll apply to all and press yes. Now you will get this. If you go in font, you will be able to select it. I can equip the area of 2,3. That would be my gun, let's say. And it is placed at 0, 0. And my indicator is at 4,4. 4. Highlighted size is 1,1. 1, 1. And there is no item in hand. So if I compile and play, press I, you can see the equipped area is gray and my indicator is somewhere in the 4,4. Now we also want to create an event that will allow you to change this equipped area. So update equipped area and I'm going to use this grid case again. Set equipped area that would be here and set equip TL position. And I'm going to plug this here. And then I'm going to plug this here. Okay, we are good. We'll create another variable that will allow you to show the discard case. So if this is true, then only we are going to draw the lines of discard case. So I'll just use it here. In the first execution pin. Plug this here. So if this is true, then only we are going to show. And we are going to create an event as well that will toggle this. So custom event, toggle discard case. I would like to duplicate this, set show discard case, and we'll take the value from here. So we are going to set the discard case background. The position would be one, two, three, six, and the size would be 390, 780. So this is I've already calculated so that we don't have to use this multiply because this is going to be fixed anyway. So select the same brush and the tint would be go for this value 050303D3. Okay, in the linear. Press OK and pass this context here as well. Let's also change the color of my lines of this card case. So I would like to go for this value. All one in last, there are two FF. Press OK. And for primary case grid lines, go for 818180. Press OK. Okay, before we test it, I think this branch node should be here because this is entirely equipped area and this equipped text. So this should only be done when there is actually something equipped. So let's just move it here. So if it is true, then draw the box and then only draw the E. Okay, so I have beautified stuff. First we draw the primary, then the discard, then the indicator, then we check and then we draw the equipped area. And of course we only draw if the discard case is toggled. Okay, all good. Now let's compile and play. Press I. You can see my equipped area i have e and i have a discard case in right and i have a blinking at 4 comma 4. all right all good now it's time we add the final part that is our character and then we can move on to the weapons open your third person blueprint add a scene capture component here just leave it and i would like to create a texture for it so in the texture target render target so in the inventory system, we created textures. So let's create the player texture and the target 2D. And this would give us the result. Save and go in the folder. Create material. Press enter. And inside this, go for user interface, translucent. Do the same thing that we used to do. Just connect this RGB and one minus the alpha 
and pass it to opacity. Save and go back to your BP third person. And in the viewport, you will find the second camera here. Let's set its position. So first I would like to rotate it on Z axis by 180 so that it looks towards the player. And I would like to set its position to 103. Compile. And here in details, I would like to go for thick even when paused. So when you open the inventory, you will pause the game. But we do not want to pause the character component because we want to see his idle animation. So let's select it. And in the texture render, let's set the image 900 by 1080. This would give us the image. And we can go back to our widgets, inventory system. In the WBP inventory, we're going to put our character here. So let's bring out the image component, drag it at the top, select the player texture and the target to the mat, and then we can name it player. We can go for full screen mode, zero, zero. Okay, I think I need to move this player below. Okay, now I can see. Now set the anchors in middle and set the values that I'm about to write here. Minus 447, 332.57, 1431 in X, 1538 in Y. Alignment should be minus 0 0.26, 0 0.538. Actually 1432 and 1539. Okay, so these are the final values. Now let's save it. We also have to allow tick when paused for this mesh so that it can play the animations. Save and compile. Go back to your events graph. And at the start of event begin play, let's bring this capture components and go for show only actor components. So if there are any components attached like guns and all those will be visible and including the actor itself, nothing other than that. Let me get a reference to self and we can pass this here. If I go to my grid case and discard case, let's toggle it off, compile play i you can see i don't have any background but still it's little dark so how to handle that is by going in the textures multiply by let's say three and then put it in this if you observe any kind of error just go to your textures again and uh, and create a new one and go inside this enable user interface Create translucent, go for multiply three and pass it here. And this would be one minus, plug this here, save. Once you are done, just select the old one, delete it and pass the new reference here. So it would be player texture mat one and replace references and say yes and yes and continue. Save selected. Once you are done, just play, press I. You can see now it is right and enough. Cool. Okay, before we end this video, there is one optimization that we need to do in the inventory graph. When you toggle the inventory, then only we want to capture all the frames, otherwise not. So this will save some resources. Just bring it here and search for capture every frame and set its value. So compile. If it is open, then capture every frame, otherwise don't. And here you also disable this capture on movement so that when you even move, it is not capturing anything. All right, so that's it for this video. Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Please join our Discord community to help us improving and giving more ideas. And subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.